Hey everybody, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined by Robert Halleck of AMD. We're going to talk about GP rendering pipeline on DX12, but before that, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower PC, who make the fanbook that we recently overclocked past 4 gigahertz. So Robert, can you give us a quick run through of the top level GP rendering pipeline? What's happening on the GPU between the game engine when a scene is being drawn? Yeah, sure. So from a really high level, uh, the game will ask the graphics card to do something, the CPU will pull in that information, order it up for the graphics card, and send it off to the GPU. Uh, the GPU will interpret the work as provided by the CPU. Um, that's, that's what you would call a draw call anytime the CPU asks the GPU to do something. And then at the front end of the GPU, you have a hardware scheduler, which organizes the compute and the graphics and the memory workloads and then uh, sends that through the graphics pipeline where you set up the geometry, the texturing, the lighting, the effects, and then you spit it out on the other side, uh, and that's raster graphics. It comes out in your monitor. So where in the pipeline when you're working with geometry, does that get drawn before the shaders are applied or before the effects are applied? Yeah, geometry comes first. And then where do the ACEs come in for AMD? Uh, with DX11 in this case. So that's at the front end of the GPU with uh, the hardware schedulers or the ACEs. Uh, that's where the GPU decides is this compute work or is this graphics work and then schedules those separately. And then with DX12, do, so do the ACEs benefit DX12 for rendering? Yeah, so in DirectX12 there's this feature called asynchronous compute uh, where the setup for effects like uh, compute related effects, depth of field, artificial intelligence, uh, GPU physics, um, a lot of camera effects. The, the setup work for that can be done independently of the geometry work. So you can do those at the same time. So when the model is finished, the geometry is finished, the setup work for all the compute stuff is already done. So you can jump right into rendering that out. And, and that saves a ton of time. What would you say in some of the, we spoke to Roy Taylor previously about this, at the capsaicin event. What would you say is the uh, responsible element for some of AMD's gains with DX12 and recent benchmarks? I think it's two things. Uh, one is asynchronous compute. We're seeing 5 to 30% uplift on, out of that feature, which is just huge. Uh, but also, it's more of a long-term strategy for us. Uh, Mantle was a big piece of that. First off, winning the console cycle, getting all the developers familiar with AMD hardware, and how to use our architecture. Every game developer studio that produces for console has AMD hardware, the same kind of hardware that we use on the desktop, right. um, architecturally. And, and so we trained them on the console, then we gave them an API on the desktop that worked very similarly, and then all the desktop gaming APIs now kind of look and work like Mantle. So when you put all of those pieces together in a, in a chain, in a story, you see the results in DirectX 12. People know how to use low-level APIs on our hardware. They were trained to it. Where does where does Vulkan play into this compared to uh, DX 12 programming on the game side? Is does it have similar gains for AMD? How does it work at, at that level? Well, Vulkan's still pretty early. It's uh, I, I, you know I've seen developer conjecture that it's like eight months behind DirectX 12 in terms of uh, development. But there is already a game, the Talos Principle. Um, more are coming. We know that, um, but. Vulkan is based on Mantle. Uh, so we took the entire Mantle project or the API specification and donated it to Kronos last year. So they've built on that to make it multi-vendor, multi-operating system, but at its heart, it's still a lot like Mantle. Right. Yeah. So uh, closing us out here, give us a quick run through of what you guys have at the booth at PAX. Sure, so we're doing a five on five League of Legends tournament and then uh, I believe uh, Saturday, we're, we're switching to a different game, then Sunday we're going to do uh, user choice. Um, we're showing Oculus VR, uh, some of our game partners like Banner Saga, just all the, the good gaming stuff that we're doing right now. Very cool. So that's the AMD booth at PAX East 2016. Link in the description below for more information, photos, things like that. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.